The Bad Batch has concluded with a beautiful ending. However, there is one aspect that I think could have been handled much better. The fate of Royce Hemlock. So the Bad Batch is now finally over and we are moving away from Clone Force 99. But that doesn't mean that we cannot keep talking about them because frankly, they have made themselves an important element to Star Wars like almost no other character, especially in Star Wars canon at the very least. For a lot of people, the Bad Batch group or the Clone Force 99, including Omega, they are the favorite characters in the series. As for me, however, I think Hemlock might be up there with one of my favorites. And I do get it. Some people might think that's a little bit weird, given that he is technically a sociopath, maniac, crazy guy. But then again, a lot of people do really like Palpatine and Darth Vader and even more crazy people in Star Wars Legends. So people can enjoy dark characters in Star Wars. And I don't really think they have to try and morally justify it every single time, because sometimes a character is just a really interesting, fascinating character, even though they are considered to be on the bad side of the war or the bad side of the conflict. Royce Hemlock, for me, is up there as one of my favorites. And that is why I'm a little bit critical with how they concluded his story by the end of season three. You see, Hemlock is an incredibly fascinating character. He's very, well, he's a sociopath, for, for that's quite clear. But he's also a very upright and strict and disciplined guy. And he ironically has some similar character traits like Thrawn. And I'm sure that many of you guys do like Thrawn a lot as well. So then you're probably able to understand what I'm talking about when I say that Hemlock and Thrawn have some similarities. But the most fascinating part about Hemlock is his dedication to science. We haven't really seen a character in Star Wars canon that has been truly just focused on science and science alone. Sure, in Star Wars Clone Wars, we had this one crazy maniac character who created this toxic gas that would kill anyone in its path. But let's be fair, that guy wasn't exactly magnificent in any way or form or particularly interesting. He was just kind of a crazy scientific guy. He was on screen for a quick minute and then he was eventually defeated. But Hemlock, however, he's a lot more complicated yet also simple simply because he's so focused on science and science alone. So if we look at Thrawn, he focuses heavily on military combat and strategy, and Hemlock focuses on science and the development of science and so on and so forth. And because of that, he became an incredible asset to the Empire, especially for Palpatine, which is why Palpatine told him that he could have anything that he required in order to complete his mission. And for Palpatine to say something like that, that just shows that he's an incredibly valuable asset to the Empire. So for Hemlock to complete his projects, he needs all the resources he can get and all the power he can possibly acquire in order to have Project Necromancer be successful. However, as we saw in the series, that didn't really end up happening. And this is kind of where things start to fall a little bit for me. And I said that without even realizing the pun that came with that, considering how he died, or supposedly died. Anyways, so with all of that in mind, why do I think Hemlock's death was not the best one? Well, it has a little bit to do with what I talked about earlier, they're portraying him as an incredibly important character to the story, and possibly even the franchise, especially because he's associated with Palpatine's Necromancer project, which basically all the way till the very last episode, most of us assumed was about Palpatine's own cloning experiment, which would give us the answers for why he came back in The Rise of Skywalker, or at the very least give us some better answers, although maybe not the final answer, but lead us on that path and give us kind of a development in that direction. And I don't really think that we really got that in this Bad Batch Season 3, because the Necromancer project just ended up being a bunch of animated repurposed clones that have been completely brain wiped and made into weapons. You see, Hemlock had so much more potential than what we saw by the very end. 
The reason why he was given all of this power was because he was an incredibly unique character by the very fact that he was all focused on science. And Palpatine needed people that didn't care about anything else except the progression of science. And in this very instance, what better character could you have than Hemlock? And so I thought that his knowledge and his raw kind of dedication to his work could be used elsewhere in the Star Wars galaxy, even if he's not associated with the Galactic Empire. But one of my strongest criticisms for general Star Wars overall, even if that is Legends or Canon, but more particularly Canon, is that I feel like a lot of the bad guys are killed off too easily. At least the bad guys that have the potential to become a lot more. Bad guys in Star Wars are equally as important as the good guys, because you cannot have one without the other. And with the good guys in Star Wars, you see they travel around the galaxy and do multiple things. Just look at the Mandoverse, where we'll see a lot of new characters and cameos, and whenever they ask what they have been up to, well, they have been to this planet or that planet, or help these groups of people over there, or help these groups of people over there. There have been many places in the galaxy, meaning that they have actually lived a life at a broader scale. And there's nothing really that should stop them to create stories with the bad guys where they have done the exact same thing. So that is kind of what I'm thinking they could have done with Hemlock. He could be a character that completely failed at his work on Mount Tantus, and he can find a way to escape from the Empire for his incredible failure in protecting the Mount Tantus project and more specifically the Necromancer project. And then Hemlock can go into a different part of the galaxy and then we can get broader stories. And from there on we can have more character development where he is kind of persistent on going on this path of science and this science path will lead him to great discoveries within the broad galaxy of Star Wars. And as many of you guys know, the galaxy is massive and there's a lot of things there that can be utilized for a great story. For example, hear me out. In the Thrawn novels, we hear about the species known as the Grisks. Perhaps Hemlock will associate himself with the Grisks one way or another. They are far away in the galaxy and he is focused on science and the Grisks, I don't know what they want with Hemlock, but one way they could create a story. Perhaps the Grisks want to have a better insight into the science of humans and then the Grisks can use that in their massive war against the galaxy. Assuming that they will eventually try to do a use on Vong strategy and go on a conquest against the entire galaxy. And this is all funded by the scientific help of Hemlock. So there are a lot of directions they could have gone for if they decided to keep Hemlock alive. But if we think about it, he did fall and he was shot many times, but we didn't see him technically die. And you know the rules of Star Wars, if we don't see them specifically dead, they could return. They could. And that's probably also why they said by the end that he perished. As in they couldn't find him. So I think they're giving themselves just this tiny, tiny little room so that they could possibly return Hemlock to the Star Wars galaxy of stories and, well, go from there. But okay, I think you guys have gotten the point. I definitely think that Hemlock had a lot more potential for the Star Wars franchise and I do not think that him dying was a good choice, presuming that he is dead, which is the highest probability at this point. And of course, I do get it. There are complications by leaving a guy like that alive in the era of the Star Wars original trilogy, because there are so many other characters and things going on in the galaxy now that has already been established to a point where introducing Hemlock would be difficult if he were to roam around all of these people, but for some reason we have never heard about him anywhere else in Star Wars except for the Bad Batch. So that's why I have thought about creating stories for Hemlock, again where he travels far away into the galaxy, so that he doesn't have to associate himself directly with the conflicts that happens during the original trilogy after he failed with the Mount Tantus project. But the last thing I want to say that I did enjoy with his death was that he actually stood his ground and he took like three shots into the chest without falling to the ground and he also attempted to shoot them back even after being shot, which is honestly incredibly impressive. 
Most people would just fall straight away after the first shot, but he stood his ground and I've watched this frame by frame and you can see that he is shocked, but he attempts to stay there and fight them back until obviously he falls over and plummets down into the void. I'm just gonna say that that was kind of cool to see and I do appreciate the fact that he wasn't just kind of killed by one shot and fell to the ground and that was it. He actually put up a fight. So thank you for that animators. That specifically was pretty perfect. But with that said, do let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about Hemlock's fate. I would love to discuss more about this in the comment section below and I'm probably gonna have something in the background here related to Hemlock one way or another. But you guys will just have to wait and see. So, with that, never forget, the Force is always with you.